Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Catherine Kraus. Hey, Catherine, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. So, Catherine, on Tuesdays, we talk about teams and how sometimes they create their own problems, of course. But before we dive into that, share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Great. Thanks for asking. So I actually have two books that I want to recommend today. I personally appreciate books that present the theory in a really simple way, but also give a lot of practical examples and guidance on how to apply it. So my go-to book for Scrum is Essential Scrum, A Practical Guide to the Most Popular Agile Process by Kenneth Rubin. And when I first became a Scrum Master, I read this um, cover to cover. And I like this book because it not only presents the concepts, the rituals, and the artifacts of Scrum, but it also explains why these are important. So I would really recommend this book to any Scrum Master who wants a good overview, especially for those Scrum Masters just starting out. Um, I found that the the certification was great, but I wanted to really go more in depth after my Scrum Master certification. So this was a perfect book just for that. The second book I wanted to recommend is around the topic happiness at work. So this is a really big uh, topic for me. And... I've done a lot of research around this topic. There's been research to show that employees and teams to report happiness at work on average perform higher. And this really fascinates me. So um, Sean Acker's work, Happiness Advantage, um, he is a leading uh, positive um, psychologist. And in this book, Happiness Advantage, he he argues that happiness gives us an advantage in basically every aspect of our lives. Um, And what's really cool is that when we are positive or happy, our brains actually work better. Um, And so this is really fascinating for me as a a scrum master, because obviously I want my my team members and my teams to work better. And when we're happy, we're more engaged, we're creative, we're motivated, um, resilient, and we're even more productive. So I'd recommend this book for scrum masters or really any leader because it's part of our job, I think, to make sure that people can work in a positive environment, not only for their own well-being, but because happiness leads to better results for companies. I remember once, uh, I think it was like maybe 2003 or four. a friend of mine at work put this uh, kind of uh, newspaper article on, on the door of his uh, room. And it was very, very interesting article because it said that happy cows give more milk, right? They had done the research and the, the way they treated the cows had an impact on the milk production, which when you think about it makes perfect sense because of course, stressed cows and, you know, maybe too tired, underfed cows are not going to produce so much milk. And of course he, he did that kind of as a joke, but also as kind of an indication that, hey, you know, pay attention if you treat us badly and you make us unhappy, then of course we're not going to be as productive as as we would otherwise be. Uh, I like this metaphor because nobody really cares about how much milk a cow produces. I mean, at least in the IT world, nobody really pays attention to that. But it was a great metaphor, and of course, now that you mentioned the the happiness advantage, like that's research into humans, right? Like in how they perform at work, maybe even cognitive performance, which is what many of us in IT need to do every single day, right? And I, I think it's a, a, a brilliant reminder that the way we prepare the environment around ourselves, right? Like the, the interactions, the stress or lack thereof, the happiness or lack thereof will have a direct impact on how the teams work. And uh, I think that you, you've already shown here on this uh, uh, episode and a half that we've had together, that you have a positive mindset and you have this positive approach to the work that you do as a Scrum Master. And I think that as Scrum Masters, we have this huge influence in the teams that we work with. So we should take that into account. Yeah, and I think I think the positive mindset is really the key to um, to really making progress on 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 your goals, um, both as individuals, but also as as a team. And what's really cool is that happiness is contagious. 
So actually a lot of emotions are contagious, anxiety is contagious as we saw in the pandemic, um, but also happiness is contagious, contagious. So happiness spreads. So yeah, as a scrum master, I wanna be as, I wanna spread happiness, that's for sure. Absolutely, that's a beautiful way to put it. All right, so we need to spread happiness to the teams. And of course, now we dive into the team story. So we want to hear a story from you, Catherine, about a team and how those little patterns or behaviors developed over time that ultimately led to problems. So tell us that story. Yeah, so I took over a team from another Scrum Master and the first word she said to me was not to bother with all this kind of mushy team building stuff. <laughs> um, I was told from the beginning that this team was different and they were a team of experts and they just wanted to focus on developing their own stuff. So I was slightly alarmed, but also kind of curious. So, you know, being a coach, I asked these questions like, how, how did that perception of being a team of experts serve them as a team? And where did that not serve them? So those were, that's what's kind of going through my head. Um, and then I observed the team for a few, you know, sprints and noticed that the team members were in fact really good about taking responsibility and owning their own topics. However, they really, weren't crazy about kind of taking on tasks outside of their competencies and they didn't have a really broad range of skills. So they, they shunned away from, from taking extra work outside of what they can really do. Um, so this expertise obsession, I called it, um, it created a real blockage for the team in the end. Um, the product owner chose features based on the expertise of the team members rather than the other way around. And so that caused um, multiple problems, but um, in particular, this pain of having eye-shaped members, so members that have really good depth of knowledge and a skill in a single discipline, but they don't have a lot of knowledge or skill outside of their discipline, um, that as opposed to having more like, let's say T-shaped people, like good depth of knowledge in one discipline, but also, you know, um, breadth of knowledge and skill and multiple disciplines. So we had a lot of I-shaped members and not many T-shaped members. So the because of that, um, members would complain of having nothing to do and become bored or unengaged if their skills were not used. And this caused a problem for the whole team. There was no kind of team collusion, right? So um, to solve this, despite my former <laughs> Scrum Master colleague's advice, you know, not to do the mushy team building stuff, um, I decided to do some team building and we dived into kind of the strengths of the team. So um, one, one way I made it kind of fun was we did a Marvel themed, you know, what's your superpower exercise. I'm sure some of the listeners are familiar with that one that retrospective to, and, and the purpose of that was to really understand how to better use our strengths and skills for the good of the team and also how to share them with the team members. Um, we also did a more form, formal competencies matrix. We, we kind of made a list of all the technical skills and really identified in detail what exactly do we have and to what level and also what was missing. And so the result was that the team you know, they started slowly but surely hosting more internal knowledge sharing sessions. So, and, and was this mm -hmm. as an outcome of the discussion of skills or was it because some people say, hey, I would like to learn that? Like how, how did that transition from I want to be an I shape to I want to be more of a T shape team member happened? Yeah, it, it, it was interesting. So we started out with just kind of talking about what can people do and then there started yeah like you said a little bit of excitement around oh wow I didn't know you could do that I would really like to learn that so you know, there was this great combination of kind of um, intrinsic hey I'm 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 curious about that I want to learn that and also kind of an external um, need for the team to become more diversified because of the you know the features that we were getting and what we needed to, to do as a team right so it was a nice Kind of combination of the two and um yeah so that was really really helpful and um what also helped in, in addition to these internal knowledge sharing sessions we also did some um pair testing and some pair bug solving sessions so not necessarily pair programming because there was such kind of a gap but we started off slowly with kind of test cases and bugs 
where um, two members could work together closely to to learn more from each other. For me, the kind of the core of this uh, story is that sometimes the teams themselves imagine a future where only that expertise is valued, right? And they might even individually, they might want to learn more about different areas. And usually people in IT are motivated by learning technology, right? But they will not take the steps until two things happen. First, they, they recognize it's possible. And second, they are given the permission implicitly or explicitly by somebody, either you know a, a, a team lead or, or, or a leader, a manager, or then by themselves, right? Like because the team can also explicitly give itself permission to to do that uh, cross skilling or or sharing of knowledge. Uh, and I, I really like the aspect of bringing it up in a retrospective because then uh, you know we we strive at least to make retrospectives kind of safe places where we can talk about the difficult topics. And and at that point, if we are able to create that safe space, then teams will be able to, or team members will be able to see, hey, but. I would like to learn that technology. I, I, I've been, you know, looking into it even and wouldn't mind doing something if I get some help, right? And that's the trigger we need because then you, we can ask, hey, who would like to help John with his, uh, you know, desire, curiosity to learn this new technology? Yeah, absolutely. And I loved what you said about there has to be a little bit of an external push sometimes. It's like a pull and a push. So, um, you know, the pull... Like the the push is maybe like, hey, you know, we, we need to do this. We need to come or become more diversified. But it's also pull. Like I want to learn this. I and and it's giving the teams, I think, space and time to be able to learn. Um, so what we had, luckily, we had an extra sprint, um, um, or actually two sprints, dedicated only to kind of learning and innovation. Um, so that was really helpful. So we actually put in some of these knowledge sharing sessions within that. Um, within that sprint, within those two sprints to kind of, you know, give them dedicated time to be able to do that because they can have the desire to learn. But if you don't give them the opportunity and the space to do that, uh, then it just doesn't work. So luckily, we did have a very supportive management to help us with that. Yeah, I think this is a great story because many teams are in this position. Uh, the more in a hurry they are, the more they will be in that skill silo, right? We're so busy, we don't have time to teach anyone. But it's a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Catherine. Thank you. Tuesday is Team Day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.